Now that we've gone through condensed structures, uh, we've got to move on to what are called bond line structures or line angle formula. Uh, in this case, this is the ultimate in organic chemistry laziness. So in this case, organic chemistry uh, molecules contain carbons and hydrogen so ubiquitously that we just stop drawing them all together. And you're just supposed to know where they're at. Uh, the way this works is any vertex in a molecule that is not labeled is by default a carbon atom. So everything I'm labeling here, those are all carbon atoms. They're vertexes in the structure, not labeled, they're carbon. Great, that's the first part of the rule. So the next rule involving line angle structures is involving the hydrogen atoms. We're lazy there as well. We don't typically draw hydrogen atoms that are bonded to carbons. So it's generally just understood and inferred that each carbon has enough hydrogens to get a filled octet unless it has a formal charge, and we'll take a, uh, a look at that as well. Uh, so if we look here, this carbon here uh, has one bond showing. Therefore, to get a filled octet, it must have three additional bonds, and most carbons make four bonds. So, and therefore, I have three hydrogens. This one right here in the middle of the molecule has got three bonds showing, so it only needs one bond to hydrogen to get a filled octet. This one right here, one bond showing, needs three bonds to hydrogens to get a filled octet. This one's got two bonds showing, so it needs two bonds to hydrogens to get a filled octet. And this carbon right here, again, one bond showing, must therefore have three bonds to hydrogens to get a filled octet. Cool, so this is how it works with hydrogens. Take a look at what, what happens when we have a formal charge here. So again, every vertex is a carbon in both of these structures. So we'll get those labeled first and foremost. But after that, so each of these carbons on the ends has three hydrogens to get a filled octet. So I'll get those in place as well. Same thing on the adjacent molecule here. Three hydrons on each of the terminating carbons. Okay, the question is, what about this one here? So in this case, if I give him two hydrogens, he will have a filled octet, but he wouldn't have a positive formal charge either. We'd count the bond, you know, uh, formula for formal charge, four minus one, two, three, four, and he have no formal charge. So we actually have to take off one of those hydrogens here. So he's only got one, and now we'd have four minus one, two, three, and he'd have a positive formal charge. So we'll find out later on, this is called a carbocation, uh, when you have a carbon with a positive charge. So, and typically that only has three bonds rather than four. Now, if we do the same thing over here with this carbon, and again, normally we just blindly draw in two more bonds to hydrogens to get him a total of four bonds. But again, he'd have no formal charge, and this is not going to work. And so we find out here that if we take one of those hydrons off, now he's got a positive formal charge, or at least he should. And so what you actually have to do is infer that there's a lone pair of electrons there. And now if you calculate formal charge, it'd be 4 minus 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, negative 1. And so this is what we call a carb anion, a carbon with a negative charge. So typically he's got three bonds and a lone pair. So finally, last little bit of laziness here is that find out that we do indeed draw hydrogen atoms that aren't bonded to carbon, if they're bonded to any other atom here. So we've got a couple of them here bonded to nitrogen, and we will draw those in. Any bonded to any other atom than carbon, we'll draw them in. We'll find out later in the semester that one special case will we typically draw a hydrogen bonded to a carbon atom even, uh, but we'll leave that for later. Uh, we also find that though with these hetero atoms, atoms other than carbon and hydrogen, we don't include their lone pairs of electrons, their non-bonding electrons. So and it's just inferred that just in the same way you add bonds to hydrogen to get carbons a filled octet, you add lone pairs of electrons to give hetero atoms a filled octet, unless they're an exception to the octet rule. Uh, so in this case, oxygen is not an exception to the octet rule. Right now he's got four electrons around him total between shared. That implies he must have four more, and in this case, two lone pairs. So nitrogen over here has got three bonds, so a total of six electrons around him to get a filled octet. He would also need a lone pair of electrons. So and in this case, that's how we infer that. So we kind of complete this structure overall. So we've got a carbon there, a vertex that's not labeled, a carbon there, a vertex that's not labeled. So and in this case, the carbon on the left has three hydrogens to get a filled octet. So in the carbon in the middle has already got four bonds showing and a filled octet and does not have any hydrogens bonded to him. And this is the overall completed structure here uh, if we were to kind of turn this bond line structure into a Lewis structure. So now we've got to put this all together. Our three different ways of representing uh, molecules here, bond line structures the newest here. We did condensed structures, and we've also seen Lewis structures. So it turns out it's easiest to turn Lewis structures into either bond line structures or condensed structures, and it's easiest to connect bond line structures to condensed structures through the Lewis structure. So you'll get used to this, you know, and won't need to do so later on uh, in your organic chemistry career here. Uh, but for now, I would connect the two via Lewis structures. So we want to turn these connect structures into bond line structures, and the first thing I'd recommend 
recommend doing is just turning them into a Lewis structure. So in this case, we've got a carbon bonded to three hydrons, bonded to another carbon that's bonded to two hydrons, bonded to another carbon that's bonded to two hydrons, bonded to another carbon that's bonded to two hydrogens, and finally bonded to another carbon that's bonded to three hydrogens. So to make a proper bond line structure here, we've got one, two, three, four, five carbons in a row, and we'll do one, two, three, four, five carbons in a row. Those are all representing carbons there. So just a, so we obviously wouldn't draw the C's in, but that is the bond line structure for this very simple alkane. Now if we go to something a little more complex again, I'd recommend first going again to the Lewis structure. So we've got a carbon bonded to three hydrogens, bonded to a carbon that's bonded to one hydrogen and to a bromine atom. And that's bonded to a carbon that's bonded to one hydrogen and to what we'll learn is called a methyl group, a CH3, so a C that's bonded to three H's coming off the main chain. And then that's bonded to the next carbon up the chain that's bonded to two hydrogens. And then to another carbon that's bonded to three hydrogens. Now if I want to turn this into a bond line structure, I recommend just find your longest continuous carbon chain here, and that's one, two, three, four, five carbons. And just zig and zag till you get five carbons, three, four, and five. Now we see that the second one from the left is going to have a bond to a bromine. It also has a bond to hydrogen, but again, we don't draw those in. So next one down the chain has a bond to a CH3. And so we just draw a line. Again, it's implied that this vertex is a carbon that has as many hydrogens as it needs to get a filled octet. So, and this is the entire complete bond line structure uh, for the given condensed structure. Here we've got a couple more examples. And again, I recommend if you want to get a bond line structure out of these condensed structures, draw a Lewis structure first. So at least early on here in the semester. So if we've got a carbon bonded to three hydrons, bonded to another carbon bonded to two hydrons, bonded to a carbon that's only got one hydrogen, which is bonded to a carbon that's only got one hydrogen, which is bonded to a carbon that's got three hydrogens. So in this case, we can see that these two carbons are both one bond short, and therefore it's implied there must be a double bond there. So if I want to make this uh, into a bond line structure now, my longest carbon chain is one, two, three, four, five. So, and if I do this, one, two, three, four, five, zigging and zagging for five carbons, and between from the left, the third, and the fourth from the left, so third and fourth, there's a double bond there. We'll learn a little bit later on that actually there's two different representations of this molecule. You could actually have it as such. You could also do this version of it as well. And we'll refer to these as uh, geometric isomers or diastereomers, but they're cis and trans isomers, something we'll learn later on. But had you come up with either one of these uh, as of now, great. And most students would have come up with the one on the left first. Uh, this other example here, we've got to, again, go to the Lewis structure first, carbon with three hydrogens, bonded to a carbon with two hydrogens, bonded to a carbon that's bonded to a carbon that's bonded to a carbon with three hydrogens. So, and again, here we've got these two carbons that are both two bonds short of having a filled octet, and the easiest solution is just to make a triple bond, and they're both now happy, and every atom's happy now. So if I want to make this into a bond line structure, we're going to have to play with this a little bit. So if we go down the list, we got one, two, three, four, five. Let's just say we take the same approach we just did, one, two, three, four, five. So if we just insert a triple bond right here, we got problems. The problems we have is that these two carbons are sp hybridized. So, and the bond angles for sp hybridized atoms is 180 degrees. So, and in this case, that is definitely not 180 degrees. Now, this was not something we had to worry about over here with an alkene, with a carbon-carbon double bond, because those were sp2 hybridized carbons. So, and the bond angles for those are 120 degrees. So for an alkane, they're 109.5. So with all single bonds for sp3 hybridized atoms and for sp2s, they're 120. Well, the difference between 109.5 and 120 is not too big, and nobody's pulling out their protractor to check. But when I look at this, this might be 120, it might be 109.5, but it definitely is not 180. And you should not draw an alkyne like this. So if you want to properly draw an alkyne, I recommend first thing you do is just draw the triple bond. And whether you want to draw it off at an angle or horizontal or vertical is really up to you. But draw the two bonds coming off of it at 180 degrees as well. So on the right-hand side, we just had one carbon. On the other side, we had two. So I'm going to zig and zag from there. And this is the correct bond line structure for that carbon-carbon triple bond containing molecule called an alkyne. Another couple examples to run to, and if I want to get a, again to get a bond line structure, I go through the Lewis structure. So I've got a carbon bonded to three hydrogens to start. 
So bonded to another carbon that's bonded to one hydrogen, bonded to another carbon that's also bonded to one hydrogen, bonded to a carbon. So, and if we, we'll find out here that we actually can't put the O in the chain or we wouldn't get everybody the proper number of bonds. So I'm kind of short circuiting the process here. Uh, we'll put it as a branch off the chain and then again bonded to another carbon that's bonded to three hydrogens. And so if we see who's not happy here, so these two carbons are next to each other and are one bond short and the solution is to get a double bond. So, and then the carbon and the oxygen are next to each other and they're both one bond short of the number of bonds they want, carbon wanting four, oxygen wanting two. So we'll put another bond there. And the oxygen mm -hmm. technically if, would also have a couple of lone pairs. Now, if I wanna turn this into a bond line structure now, so find your longest carbon chain, one, two, three, four, five, and zig and zag for five carbons. So between carbon two and three from the right, we're gonna have a double bond. And as we put on the last slide, technically we can make a cis and a trans version of this, but we'll worry about that a little bit later. So this is the trans version. So we see that from the first, second, third, fourth one from the left here, we're also gonna have a double bond to an oxygen. So, and again, we don't technically have to draw those lone pairs in. I recommend you draw them in. Your professor will probably want you to draw them in. Um, but technically for a proper bond line structure, you don't have to draw lone pairs in on hetero atoms. Uh, but this is your bond line structure with or without those lone pairs. So second molecule on the page here, we've got a carbon bonded to three hydrogens bonded to a carbon that's bonded to two hydrogens, bonded to another carbon that's bonded to two hydrogens, and then we've got this lovely COOH. You'll learn later on this is a carboxylic acid. The last one here, the carbon oxygen bond, was technically a ketone. Uh, but with this carboxylic acid, you'll find out that one of the oxygens has to be a branch, so and the other one just continues on. So as we go from here, you'll find that all the carbons off to the left here, the first three, they're all happy. They all got filled octets. But this carbon is a bond short, and the oxygen's a bond short, and the solution is to give a carbon-oxygen double bond. And again, this oxygen technically has two lone pairs, and so does this one. And this is your proper Lewis structure. And again, if I want to turn this into now a bond line structure, my longest continuous carbon chain is one, two, three, four carbons. So I'd go one, two, three, four carbons. Be careful, don't count your lines, your bonds, count your carbons. One, two, three, four. So from here, fourth one or from the left or the first one on the right there has a double bond to oxygen and it's also bonded to an OH. So in this case, again, we don't necessarily have to include the lone pairs on the oxygens for a proper bond line structure. So this is your proper bond line structure for that carboxylic acid. So the last thing we want to do here for bond line structures is to start with a bond line structure and convert it back. Uh, whether that be to a condensed structure or a Lewis structure is up to you. I'm just going to go to Lewis structures. I know you can turn Lewis structures into condensed structures if you need to at this point. Um, but in this case, just because you can convert it one way doesn't guarantee that you can convert it another way. So I highly recommend you practice both here. And so if you recall, just every carbon in a structure, uh, or every vertex anyways, is a carbon. So in this case, we've got four carbons in a straight chain here. So and if we want to convert it to a Lewis structure, we can draw the hydrogens in as well. And we see that this guy's got three hydrogens, if you recall. This one's got two. And this one's definitely got three as well. But our carbocation, we learned here that a carbon to have a positive formal charge only has three bonds instead of four. And so if we kind of polish off our Lewis structure here, And then finally, this one, whether you make it up or down as arbitrary, only has the three bonds, and then this guy's got his three H's, and we've got to show that positive formal charge. And again, whether you draw the hydrogen up or down, and the positive formal charge on the top or bottom is totally arbitrary. So on the next one here, we've got carbon, 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 carbon. So we're going to, again, have a four carbon straight chain. So, and most of this molecule is going to look like the one we just did. I'll kind of take that for granted skip over to the far right here. He's got three H's. And again, the big difference here is this carbon with the negative formal charge. And we recall with the negative formal charge, that carbon's going to have to have only three bonds and a lone pair of electrons. So in this case, we're going to have one H. We're going to have that lone pair of electrons and a negative formal charge on that carbon. There's your proper Lewis structure. So and finally, last case here is the first case we've seen a single unpaired electron. We call a single unpaired electron a radical. As it turns out, we'll visit them later on in the semester. Uh, but if I want to draw a Lewis structure, I've still got four carbons in a straight chain. So one on the left, it's implied he's got three hydrants. Second one in, two hydrants. And the one on the very far right, also implied he's got 
three bonds to hydrogens. So, but this guy, it turns out he's got no charge, but he does have a single unpaired electron. They've got to show that to kind of give us a hint here. Uh, and it's implied he's got one hydrogen. So, and if you notice, if you calculate formal charge, carbon's got four valence electrons normally. So four minus one, two, three lines and one dot would give zero formal charge. So, and that's your structure of the radical. So if, to be a radical, three bonds and just a single unpaired electron.